we'd like to thank you all for coming and joining us on this space. Uh, Tubi Shvat, as I keep saying, is one of my favorite holidays, and Leah is one of my favorite people, and HIU is a great space, and we're going to lead us through some of the things we're excited about with the Jewish, being both part of the Jewish community, and some things we feel like people outside the Jewish community from can take from this holiday. Leah, you have anything to add? Um, no, just that I'm excited to share. Sorry for being a few minutes late, but I'm Leah, as Nikki said, and I am the current um, peace building student, just as a brief introduction. Yeah. And I'll pass it over to you to give our opening yeah. uh, framing. Sure, I'll start us off a quote just to start, just to set our intentions. For man is a tree of the branches are in heaven for the head, which is the root of a man faces upwards. And this is why of the field planted in heaven and through his intellect, he is planted in his place, which come and blow, they would not move from, from his place. Fantastic. So kind of just leading to the moment. question. Yeah. Okay. What's up? Can you? No, I was just I was just saying take a moment for that to sink in. All right. Great. So kind of beginning with the question on everyone's mind. Didn't we just have a new year? Didn't you just hear from us either for Rosh Hashanah, which is typically recognized as the new year? for January 1st for the secular new year or for any number of new year's celebrations. And that's because in the Jewish community, we actually have four things we recognize as the new year. So right after the Passover, the Exodus story is what is written to say, the first of Nisan is the first of your calendar year. Then we have the first of Elul, which happens after that, which is the new year for animal sacrifice. So in the biblical time of the Exodus, 10% of your flock was going to sacrifice. So to figure out which year, depending on when your sheep and cows were born, they were eligible for that. That was the new year for the animals. Then we have the first of Tishrei, Rosh Hashanah, which is the new year in terms of observance. It is the new year for kings. New Year's for sabbatical and New Year for planting. And then Tubishvat, where we're at right now, which is the New Year for the trees. So ceremonially, every seven years, you'd have a Jubilee year, you let your fields rest. So to figure out both when your fruit could be sacrificed, when your fruit needed to be rested, and also in terms of land disputes, this is the New Year for the trees and the harvest. And that's kind of from a practical and legal interpretation. And Leah, do you want to pick up on the Kabbalistic interpretation? All right. So um, now I'll go into the, the spiritual um, element of the holiday, um, which is there are two prominent excerpts from the Tanakh that have references to the significance of trees um, and the great meaning. Um, um, to the, the text itself. And um, um, the within the mystical lens, there are uh, manifestations of our spirituality, spirit, and there's seven of them. And there's a belief that these seven spirit formation of a tree. So you can kind of see within this image, um, that there's these circular balls in the middle aligning with the tree. And those are known as, are considered, or they're thought to be spread throughout her, our body. Um, and um, that is a really significant um, in the, the Kabbalistic tradition. And I'll pass it back off to you, Mick. So kind of, answer, <clears throat> excuse me, as my voice goes, answering the question on everyone's mind, how do we celebrate Tu Bishvat? So if we were together in person, we typically eat from seven species. So you can see on top, we have wheat, barley, grapes, figs, pomegranates, olives in some kind, and wheat, grapes, pomegranates, bar barley, olives, uh, and fruit with bits. 
that dates specifically, lost the word in English there for a second, that uh, we go through and each one of those species is paired with a different glass of wine or grape juice, starting from white and going to red to talk about the transition through the seasons. And pass it back to Lee for the first cup. Yes, so um, we can do this kind of symbolic, like a glass of water or, um, you know, any like food that's successful. Um, we're gonna symbolize this by using uh, fruits and nuts that are hard on the outside and edible. And then white wine, which is reminiscent of winter. Um, in the Jewish mystical tradition, Tuba Shabbat is it's a turning of seasons from to light so from you know that's the symbolic of um the white wine and so it's it's an era that's noted by um um into lightness and so i will say the prayer um Elohine malchalam bare pari ha'etz blessed are you god king of the universe who creates the fruit of the tree So for our second cup, this begins with white wine that has about a third red wine to look at the signifying the start of spring. And that's because the second dimension is about formation. So you start with the building block where you have to kind of dig to it and then you are forming and creating something. And that is also represented by fruits with a soft outside and a hard pit. So like apricots, for example, and the prayer we picked for this comes from the morning prayer, uh, Nasim B'chol Yom, so it's every day right before the Shema. This idea, Mekadesh uh, B'chol Yom Tamid Ma'aseh Bereshit, that God creates the world daily and constantly is taking part and direct action in that renewal or that formation. Which then okay. leads us to our next part, yeah. Oh. Sorry. So the third, our third cup, which is going to um, signify fire or creation, we'll use <laughs> symbolic fruits <laughs> as well as um, a half and half one to represent the duality of spring. Um, and this also is to symbolize nothing. Um, and I'll read, my beloved called and said to me, my beauty come away for lo the winter is over the rain is past and gone the flood the time of song has come and the call of the turtle dove is heard in our land it is ripening its early figs and the vines and blossom give forth their fragrance it's 2 11, 13. and finally that brings us to our fourth cup which is about emanation. So bringing forth that light and that connection and groundedness. Ultimately, we get the red wine, which is our connection to harvests. Oops. Excuse me, we get our red wine, so connection to harvests and fruits and nuts that are hard on the outside and also capable of growing something on the inside like avocado. And for this quote, we pulled from Rav Nachman of Breslov who was a Jewish spiritual mystic who really practiced a lot of solo meditation in nature and stressed that as a means of connecting to God. And he says, may it be my custom to go outdoors each day among the trees and the grasses, among all growing things. And there may I be alone and enter into prayer to talk with the one that I belong to. And thinking about this in a modern context or in a spiritual kind of eco context, we wanted to bring in this meditation by Devin Spire on trees and on uh, personal connection. And they say, our whole life, we live among trees, but do any, do any of us know we are one of them? Species sprout out of the earth, not from a single source, but their own miraculous uniqueness, forged by years in unknown lands, pasturing to barrenness, giving birth in death. It will be years before any of our fruit comes forth, but our senses to live even as we wither away, to move through seasons that would have us become the word we say, our vocabulary grows the field. And finally, one thing that's really special to Tubishvat is it's one of the holidays we say 
the Shekhi, the Shekhi Anu blessing to give thanks for first, which Leah will lead us in as a closing. So I think it's it's a first in the sense that we're celebrating um, for the trees of the first and also uh, celebrating um, together, or maybe one of Oh, sorry about that. Mickey, can you take over? Oh, yeah. good. Yeah. Sorry. I didn't know if we'd all, but yeah. Shehakianu is said specifically on the first time you've done something in a calendar year. So the first time you have any of those specific fruits or the first time in a lifetime you do something. So essentially the text in English, uh, blessed are you the one who has kept us alive and sustained us so we could reach this moment. You can answer amen if that's comfortable within your practice, but that's just our gratitude for letting us talk and for joining us on the first of hopefully trying all these fruits and having lots of things in the new year. And if Leah's, I don't know if she's fully frozen and on, but as we sit on this last quote, our closing. Can, we, you, can you hear me? You're back? Perfect. You want to yes, close this out? Apologies. Then? Sure. Steadfast God, the tree of life, is the breath of life. Sustain us, we pray, and give us peace. The leaves of healing the nations. There are so many places today that need this help. Thank you all for joining us in our Tubishvat prayer and practice and Formally, the word for the order we have the fruit and the wine in is the Seder. So you can say you've been to one Seder. Unknown what we'll do for Passover as a community. But if you're ever in Pittsburgh, you are welcome in my community to join me for many future Seders. And thank you all. Yes, thank you. Just to second that, for any um my colleagues within my program, if you're, um, we can do a little ritual amongst ourselves. Um, and I can gather some for being a part of this and um was happy to to share a little bit yeah, we'll hang around if there's any questions if not we'll just stare at this beautiful quote for another couple seconds as you guys transition back to your days thank you so much leah and mickey benson this was great and leah we hope to celebrate with you when you're here in campus yeah, it's 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 interesting for some of us. This is the first time we're seeing the two Bishvat and would like to celebrate it with you. So I'd like to open the ground for people to ask questions. If you have any follow-up questions to Leah and Mickey Benson. Yes, God knows. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, it was my first time to learn about this holiday. But my question I would want to ask was is just like uh I saw the main theme revolving around trees and I was like, uh, can this holiday also be linked to the environmental like uh, uh, justice movement within the Jewish community? Like uh, as I was reading from this SIAC conference, which had to do something like with social justice and environmental issues, do, does it, uh, this holiday also take into account that or is just only for the spiritual thing without any attachment to the environmental justice or environmental interest is something like that. Thank you. Yeah, that's a great question. I think like I talked a little bit about the legal side of the holiday and Leah talked more about the spiritual side, but there's certainly a lot of room for there to be a justice side or to have like a Siddur that's direct or a Seder and a service that's directly rooted and written in uh here are justice texts. Have you experienced a more social justice to Bishvat that you could speak on or? Um I haven't personally. I know that there like I've seen that there are some activities for planting trees. Um but I think that I don't know if that's you know that's I guess that's more direct service side of um social justice and I, I'm sure there are events that I've seen, but I haven't yet experienced them um, and maybe are a little bit more on the periphery of the, the holiday and how it's celebrated. Yeah, 
it definitely could be used to dedicate it in that way. That's a good question. Uh, yes, Lisa. <laughs> Hi there. Um, thank you so much. What a wonderful presentation and a great feast. I wish we had a festival of the trees in the Christian tradition as well. And um, just to follow up to Godno's question, there's a, there's a Seder written by um, Rabbi Ellen Bernstein that's an earth specifically eco related. Um, to Bashvat Seder and like bringing out the ecological dimensions. And I think she also brings out the just eco justice um, elements of the feast, but I'm not sure. So um, if you're interested, you could um, look for her work and she's actually going to be coming to HIU in April. Um, so that's a question you can, we can all um, ask her about her um, to Bashvat Seder when she's here. She's going to be talking about her earth. She's also written an earth Seder for Passover. So she's going to be talking about that um, as well. And how, and the question of how can rituals and traditions um, be expanded faithfully toward ecological questions in her case, but, but questions about liturgical revision generally, how do we think about liturgical texts and, and recreating them or expanding them in ways that still feel faithful to the tradition. Um, and, but the, so that's a great opportunity um, in April. But I also was curious, is this festival, like you said, it's spring in um, Israel um, and the Holy Land. And that's connected to, the, well, so over the beginning of the rains or whatever, but like, would this festival have been, is it warm enough that this festival would have been an outdoor celebration, like actually mm. under a tree or in relationship to trees? Is it is it meant to be celebrated in like, physical relationship with trees you get cherry trees orange trees and dates all bloom this month mm -hmm. and actually most of the seven species we listed are all i mean you eat them historically on the holiday because they're available on the holiday so yeah. i mean it's much it's extremely beautiful in the springtime and so it makes sense to correlate it but i think in a diaspora context it's also really interesting to think about what it means to do spring things with a lunar calendar mm -hmm. while simultaneously also having like some more assimilationist traditions mm -hmm. like Hanukkah being a big deal when Hanukkah otherwise wouldn't be a big deal if we weren't in a different cultural context than mm -hmm. or a second night of Passover the fact or a second Seder on Passover like there are some holidays that we recognize that Jewish practice isn't happening in the Levant and we mm -hmm. celebrate them differently Tukishvat right. is very much rooted, no pun intended, in the calendar and in what the rest of the community is doing. Mm -hmm. So in the Holy Land, is it celebrated outdoors? Yeah. You'd be out at a, you'd be feasting outdoors under these blooming cherry trees or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice. And it would be very similar to how Leah and I interact with the outside world also. I haven't had the chance to be in Israel on Tu Bishvat, but I led an Israel-Palestine trip that overlapped with uh, Sukkot. And I couldn't make it five feet without someone asking me if I had someone to eat with. And they're like, oh, we're outside. You're already outside. It took a very long time to get home and is one of my most positive memories, frankly, of just general community friendliness. It, it, if I can share a Tubishvat story um, from, um, it's probably 2003, 2004. Um, I was teaching at Fordham University uh, in the Lincoln Center um, campus. So we're, we're in um, you know, it's, it's in the Upper West Side of Manhattan. And one of my colleagues was an Orthodox Jew in, in a Jesuit school. So, you know, here we are to uh, an Episcopalian and a Jewish person in, in this Jesuit environment. And he comes up to me breathless. He's, he was very intense. And I, I, I had always really enjoyed talking with him. And here he comes, Lucinda, Lucinda, you could you do me a tremendous favor? Well, of course, what do you have? I, it's, it's my holiday and I must share fruit with someone. Would you be 
willing to be the person with whom I share fruit. And I said, oh, of course. So we dashed into a vacant office, sat down, and he broke open the package of dried apricots, and we shared the fruit. But it was just it, the, the intensity of that moment, the joy of that moment, I, it, it has never left me. It was just... Thank you, Masha, for sharing. Does anyone else have something to say? I just want to say thank you to both of you for such a lovely job of, of sharing this holiday with us. Thank you. Thank you. And next year with slightly less snow and slightly more fruit wherever we all are. <laughs> Oh, Mickey, I'm wondering if the if the observance of Tu Shivat has evolved over time or it has always been the same. Has it evolved over time? That's a great question. It definitely has. There's also, for lack of a better word, like a dip and a revival in it in the last hundred years of diaspora Judaism and in post-Holocaust Judaism that's really modified all traditions, but especially since... British Mandate Palestine since Jewish uh, existence and rededication is the wrong word, but since Jews started moving to Israel and Jewish establishment in Israel again, that became another like, hey, we're here, this could be our Thanksgiving equivalent. And then also in a diaspora post-Holocaust context, figuring out what harvest holidays look like when you're somewhere where it's winter and not harvesting those things. And that's why we go from like the seven species to anything that emulates the qualities of one of these species, which I think honestly brings or harmonizes really nicely the like Kabbalistic spiritual side of it that was like, we do this because it looks like formation and it looks like creation and it looks like emanation, as opposed to just we do this because these things were available because there are also traditions that are born out of poverty and what is available. So I think that's one of the interesting evolutions. And it's also like how if you talk to like European Jews, their raised braided bread is different than uh, Sephardic or Mizrahi Jews. So uh, different Jewish contexts give you different interpretations of the same thing. Thank you. Yes, that reminds please. me of a, another question, um, which is, Last year, we had a, a community prayer on um, Nowruz, the um, holiday that also celebrates spring, but at the equinox in the Persian tradition. And um, that too had seven species. And I wondered whether these feasts have a common origin. Um, if anyone knows, that might not be something you know. I don't know, but is that are there connections between those? I wouldn't be surprised, and I'm not confident enough in my religious scholarship of other traditions to say things other than the fact that we often evolve and share tradition with our neighbors, because that makes sense when you're in a similar geographical context. You get a lot of cultural osmosis, so mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if this comes from Persian Jews and mm -hmm. or Persian neighbors, and then the Jewish community said, that seems really neat, and mm -hmm. it's very common in... Uh, post-temple pre-modernity Jewish writings to have God be synonymous with concepts of like pleasure and enjoyment. Mm -hmm. So I would say that anything that could bring you pleasure, like good food and like dining in community would be something that you would see a lot more of intentionality around integrating. Yeah, thank you. I don't, I don't have much to add to that, but I don't know if something that Dr. Mosher might know a thing or two about, given her expertise. I, I don't know that there is a direct connection between them, and they, they are oriented toward different points in, in the year. Not They're not both uh, 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 equinox um, observances, but there there is this, this, this interesting... Uh, similarity and uh, it, it might be worth digging into um yeah it's uh it, it, it's just a wonderful puzzle yeah. mm -hmm. 
Oh, to answer the question in the chat, uh, we have a lunar calendar. So the holiday begins tonight, the Seder happens tonight, and then the holiday ends tomorrow at sundown. Oh, thank you. And Mikael is wondering if uh, if there are any symbolic meanings behind the different types of fruits eaten today. Yeah, so we have like one minute, so I want to be conscious of everyone's time, but all of them have both like a practical and a spiritual component of either something that is affectionately parallel to humanity or an element of humanity or related to the body as like a tree or or this tastes good and we've added it to because there's there's a saying two Jews, three opinions. So you both have two Jews on the Zoom that Leah can give you other opinions and we can find you two rabbis who will give you 13 opinions. But generally speaking, there's all of the pieces are supposed to balance together in that uh, representing the body center. Thank you. I just I just want to know, I know that it's 1230, but I want to thank um, Dr. Dayhill for putting a, a link for a, a Seder resource in the chat for anyone who's interested in checking it out. I'll bring it, I'll give it back to you, Habiba, I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, it's, it's all right. Any more questions? Anything to say to Leah and Mickey? Okay. Yes, Dr. Mosher, do you have anything to say? Just, just thank you. It, just, it, it was a very lovely discussion following a very lovely presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Marcos? Thank you. Well, I just want to thank the two of them. Um, this is the second time Mickey is coming uh, up here. And uh, the two of them have experienced a lot of knowledge about their religion. And I'm so happy that uh, I'm in the same field work with, um, with Leah. So if I need to balance up anything on my field work, I'm going to contact you, Mickey. But for all, thank you so much. It's a wonderful time. I enjoyed it from the beginning to the end. Thank you. And Rich, thank you also. I'm here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and as, as Mickey mentioned, you know, if you want a different opinion, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that <laughs> they might have some insights that I don't have. <laughs> yeah, there's a, another phrase to just continue our Jewish vocab, this idea of an argument for the heavens, which is that it's very sacred to be in discussion about something and disagree and be in that disagreement continuously. So like if, you want more of us agreeing or disagreeing or leading in any way like that's something we're both very poised to and enjoy doing so that's i don't know continued service continued goodness all of that i'm just happy to be celebrating to bishvat to be honest that's the big one i have no living desk plants or i'd show them off now I hope I hope next time is going to be um is going to be in person so that you come with all those fruits so that we enjoy them in the chapel. It's not just easy to see them on the screen without touching and testing them. Please next time let's make it practical. Yeah, sure. <laughs> In order to share my empathy with you, the next time I go to the supermarket, I'm getting fruits that were mentioned today. This is a blessing. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's one of the other unforeseen benefits of grad school is you can have the ancient history of the charcuterie board coming out from different traditions. Amen. With that, I'm going to go cut up some fruit and put it on the plate for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, everyone, please enjoy your fruit, whatever mm -hmm. shape, whatever form it takes. 
Thank you so much. Bye bye. Yeah. Bye right, bye. Good day. Enjoy bye. the holidays. Thank you. Blessings to all. Bye. So, Miki, can I have uh, your presentation, Mitchell? Yeah, let me send that to you right now. Yeah, but you may email. Yeah, let me do Thank that. You. Thank you, Miki. No Thank problem. You, Thank you. Thank you. Thank everyone. you. Marcus. Uh, my friend. <laughs> See you. I, I just I, I ate what you sent to me last week, just yesterday night. <laughs> okay, it's okay. You can well it's a private discussion anyway. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you, everyone. Leah, thank you. Thank you. Good to see you, Dr. Sally. Thank you, everyone. Help me. Help me.